So I have a very important video today talking about autoimmune diseases and the most important vitamin deficiency related to this condition and answer a lot of important questions that people have. First of all, how do we know if we're getting enough vitamin D and how we're going to deal with the toxicity factor with vitamin D? And so I have some really good solutions to all of the questions and the problems that come up with uh, dealing with vitamin D in relationship to autoimmune diseases. Now, if you're not already familiar with the Coimbra protocol, okay, that was developed by a doctor in Brazil, it, you need to put this on your radar because a lot of people are getting amazing results by using his uh, high vitamin D protocol. However, there's something very, very important that I'm going to simplify for you in relationship to this problem. This is why he checks a hormone called the parathyroid hormone. The parathyroid gland produces the parathyroid hormone, which has everything to do with regulating your calcium. If there's low calcium in the body, parathyroid gland is going to rob calcium from your bone and put it into the blood. Now, what does vitamin D have to do with it? Well, vitamin D <laughs> helps the absorption of calcium by a factor of 20x, okay? So it helps you absorb a lot of calcium in your bloodstream. But you have something called vitamin D resistance. That means that you can be taking vitamin D, but it's not going into the body. So we really have to step away from just this calcium regulation because it controls a lot of different factors. As far as this parathyroid hormone, okay, what it actually does, it tells us if vitamin D is working biologically in your cells. You can have normal amounts of vitamin D in your blood, yet be very deficient in vitamin D. And the parathyroid hormone will tell you if that's happening. If you're not getting sufficient amounts of vitamin D, you're going to have problems with calcium absorption. And the parathyroid gland is going to have to overcompensate to overcome this vitamin D resistance. And so we look at your vitamin D levels. We look at the parathyroid hormone. Okay, We want to look at the relationship between both of them. Because normally, if you have high vitamin D, you should have low parathyroid hormone. Or if you have low vitamin D in your blood, you should have high parathyroid hormone. It's important to know that the parathyroid hormone also helps in the conversion of the inactive vitamin D to the active vitamin D as it relates to your kidneys and the liver. You're going to have vitamin D resistance. And one way to pick this up is by testing the parathyroid hormone and really understanding what a high level means and what a low level means. You're getting sufficient amount of vitamin D because you check the blood, but your parathyroid hormone is high. Suspect you have vitamin D resistance. Okay, now how are we going to fix that? Well, you're going to have to take more vitamin D. And this Coimbra protocol has everything to do with adjusting your vitamin D, increasing it to the point where you're parathyroid hormone starts to come down to like a low normal area. And that means that you're getting the biological effect of vitamin D. But the big question is, what is up with this vitamin D resistance? How do we develop it? And what is it? Typically, it has to do with the vitamin D receptor, but it can also be in the lack of conversion from the inactive to the active vitamin D because there's some genetic issue, which by the way, is very, very common. The term for this genetic problem is called polymorphism. I've tested 25 people in relationship to vitamin D, and every single one of them had at least one problem with a genetic issue with vitamin D. And of course, on top of everything else, you also have a lot of other barriers of getting vitamin D, right? People don't go on the sun. Uh, the darker your skin, uh, the less vitamin D you're going to absorb from the sun. Uh, the older you are, the less you're going to absorb. The more stress that you have, the more vitamin D you're going to need, and also the things that go along with it, like the absorption of calcium. This is why one of the side effects is osteoporosis. And then, of course, you have where you live. Let's say you live in the north, right, where you don't get as much sun. I mean, just think about the fact that the closer you are to the equator, the less autoimmune diseases you have. The more pollution you have in the environment, in the sky, the less vitamin D you're going to have. Then we get into this interesting topic of pathogens. All will have strategic effects of downgrading your vitamin D receptor 
and your immune system doesn't get the vitamin D it needs to defend against these pathogens. They're very, very sneaky. Then you get another pathogen, which is the pathogen that comes from a tick bite. Do you realize that that microorganism will downgrade your vitamin D receptor by 60x? All these people with Lyme disease, they are so deficient in vitamin D. Then you get cancer cells, especially of the colon and of your bone. They also downgrade the receptors for vitamin D so they can survive. There's also something else I want to share with you. It's a toxin from bacteria. And you see this in like systemic infections. You'll see it when someone detoxifies. Then you also have like other heavy metals that can also downgrade and make the vitamin D receptor less receptive. Now, I hope this is as interesting to you as it is to me, because I think it's actually quite fascinating to understand the mechanism, to understand there's such a thing as vitamin D resistance. And the way that we're going to overcome it is by taking more vitamin D. And the way we'll really know that it's working is to look at this parathyroid hormone. But let's say we want to protect ourselves against this calcium in the blood that's at too high. Well, there are several ways you can do it. Okay, you can do it with magnesium. You can do it with zinc, which are cofactors, but the biggest protector of this excess calcium in the blood is vitamin K2. This is why I never recommend taking vitamin D without K2. Now, usually you would need about 100 micrograms of K2 for every 10,000 I use of vitamin D. And they were taking vitamin K2 in super high amounts, seeing amazing results to overcome osteoporosis. So instead of taking micrograms, they weren't taking like 45 micrograms of vitamin K2, they were taking 45 milligrams of vitamin K2, which is a, a lot more. I'm just putting this on your radar because let's say, for example, you have calcium in your arteries, or you have a kidney stone, or you have hypercalcemia, or you have arthritis where you have too much calcium in the joints, you might want to beef up your vitamin K2 to the levels of milligrams, not micrograms. And some of the information I'm talking about is based on this amazing Kindle book that I just read twice, okay, because I couldn't stop reading it. This author has a very interesting way of writing that makes it easy to understand, which I appreciate. And I highly recommend you also check out that book. I'm going to put a link down below. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.